Hi there, Shelley here coming to you with another conversation about communication. Um, today we're talking about communicating with awareness and the key reason we're talking about communicating with awareness is because we need to become more effective in what we do. Um, and one of the big things that we do as human beings is we communicate with other people. And what we find is that when we're not being effective in our communication, we're having to do things over or we're having to fix mistakes or we're having to, um, you know, use overly complex processes or ways of getting there. Um, and it's really not efficient and it's not effective and we don't have time. We don't have time today to go back and do over um, or do right the second time around. We have to do it right and we have to do it fast. And so communicating effectively is um, a really big component of that. So I want to share a model with you. Uh, and this model is really around adapting how you communicate. It's looking at, do I like to communicate in the big picture? For example, am I okay with headline statements and a really small subheading uh, for the information that I need? Or do I need more detailed information? Do I need the headline and the subheadline, as well as the article and maybe the appendices and any attachments and references as well? So different people will want to communicate differently. And when you can understand how you communicate and then how the person that you're wanting to influence communicates, then you can see where the gap is. And then you can adapt and adjust your style to meet them closer to where they're at. And so there's a model that I want to share with you, um, which is really simplistic in its approach, but helps to really highlight, um, you know, where you can go with your own style of communication, whether you have to chunk up and get more into the big picture or chunk down and get more into the detail, or do I need to expand my thinking? And so they're the three levels that we're talking about. Um, do I know how to connect what it is that I'm saying with the bigger picture? Do I know how to take high level conceptual statements and bring it down into the detail so that you know people who do need a lot of information can make sense of that or do I need to expand my thinking because the way that I'm thinking right now is too narrow maybe I am caught in a bit of a silo or I'm fixed on one approach where there are others that might be um, available to me and so there's three questions that we can ask in order to move between big picture, detail and expanded thinking. Um, and those questions are, if we start with big picture, if I want to get someone to connect something that's detailed or has um, is quite specific in nature with the bigger picture, then the question I ask is for what purpose? Uh, and we'll put that into practice in a moment. But the more you ask for what purpose, the higher you go in terms of the big picture, the more um, strategic, the more visionary you can get up to. So for what purpose and for what purpose that and for what purpose that. Uh, on the flip side, when you go into detail, the question is what specifically? So when someone says something or when you say something and there's nothing tangible that the other person can do with that, then they might need some more information. So what specifically about that or what specifically um, does this mean or what specifically is broken or what specifically needs to be fixed? So we're asking that question again and again and again. You'll sound a bit like a broken record, um, but trust me, it's a great question to ask um, continually. And then if we want expanded thinking, we're, we're wanting to think, well, I'm considering this for what purpose and what specifically in relation to me, but what does that mean when I start to work with clients, when I start to work with my peers, when I'm collaborating across um, the organization? And that question is what else? So what else is there to explore in this realm? And so when you put those three questions together, you really can you know create your own journey you can choose your own adventure uh, let me put this into practice because it's best explained um, if we've actually got a live example so for example if we take a simple statement uh, and this is one that comes up all the time. Um, so, you know, in organizations, it's we need to improve communication. Um, you could go uh, either big picture, detailed or expand um, around this, but we might start with the big picture. So if someone says to me, Shelly, we need to improve communication, then the question I might ask is, okay, great. So for what purpose do we need to improve communication? 
And they might say, um, well, we need to improve communication so that we're all aligned to the organizational values. Yeah, okay, great. And for what purpose do we all need to align to our organizational values? And the answer might be, well, to make sure that we're operating consistently. Um, and for what purpose do we need to operate consistently? Well, uh, we need to operate consistently so that our clients uh, feel like they're communicating with consistently with the one brand and that kind of helps with our reputation and helps clients to know what to expect when they're dealing with us. Um, and you might continue to ask that question, you know, for what purpose might we want our clients to, um, you know, expect similar things when they're working with us? You might say, well, so they stay with us. Okay, and for what purpose do we want our clients to stay with us? Uh, and on and on and on. So you can kind of go up to as high as you like, uh, really. So we understand, you know, for what purpose we need to improve communication is so that we can retain our clients. And so then we might say, okay, well, what specifically is it that we need to improve in our communication? And, um, you know, I might say, well, it's our verbal communication. Go, okay, great. And what specifically is it about our verbal communication? Well, you know, it's the terminology that we use. Um, you might say, okay, well, what else? You might want to expand on this. What else? Well, it's how fast we talk. You know, we often speak so fast that people are having to repeat themselves. You go, okay, great. And what else? Well, um, it's about our volume. You know, some of us are really softly spoken and some of us are really loud. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's different um, and it's not consistent. Uh, and you might continue to say what else, or you might say, okay, so what specifically is it that we need to improve with the volume of our communication? <laughs> um, and it is, okay, well, we want to speak in a way that's not yelling, but it's not whispering, that it's just talking. And so then we can start to say, well, okay, we can work with that. Let's run some exercises or some training or do some coaching or mentoring around that. Uh, and so that's an example of how you might use the three questions together. For you in your role, these questions are really helpful to ask day to day, moment to moment, and even within conversations with other people. So if someone asks you a question and it doesn't make sense to you, then choosing one of these questions for what purpose or what specifically might help to get on the same page as them. It'll also help them to feel like you're hearing them. Um, it'll help you to make sense of the bigger picture and how things connect. It'll help you decide what's the priority that I need to give this and what is the timing that I have around this. It helps you to plan and prioritize a little bit better um, and it helps you to be more effective. And this is what we want. We want more effective communication to be happening. So this is a small snippet of how to use this. Um, this is the number one set of questions that I ask um, with my clients all the time. Um, I often get asked, uh, this is like asking why, and actually it's not. Um, so there's a difference between why and these three questions. Why could take you anywhere. Um, it can lead to opinion. Uh, it can also come across as a little bit um, intimidating if it's not asked the right way or judgmental. Um, so we, or that it's implying something else. And so why is a good question, but there are better alternatives. And these three questions are great alternatives to understanding the why behind something, but being able to ask it in a way that will intentionally get people into the big picture or intentionally into the detail or intentionally expand their thinking. Um, so enjoy these questions. If you have any questions or you want to know more about the programs that I run in the communication space, I would love you to reach out here are my details. Please keep in touch. Let me know what you think of these questions. I'd love to hear how they apply in action. Thank you so much. And I look forward to another conversation with you all soon.